hello and welcome to April's garden guide where I'm going to show with you a tour of the garden and let you know what seeds I'm currently planting. I am a tiny bit behind on my April plantings. I would have liked to have sown some seeds last week but as is life sometimes things get in the way but I'm going to have a big seed sowing marathon today. I've got some new seed trays because mine are still full from the seeds I sowed last month. I'll show you what I am planning to get sown today. Similarly to the month of March, April has a lot of seeds. So this is my pack. <laughs> I also have a huge variety of different beans that I want to get growing. I will be doing these which are black-eyed beans. They're quite traditional to plant in this area. They're known as the Lardosa bean. And then I have some really cool beans that I got from nearby veggies when we did a seed swap. Quite unusual, these big huge ones called Jacob's Cattle Gold. I think these are my favourite, they're just stunning. Called Beefy Resilient Grips. There's such variety. She gave me these as well which are called the Cherokee Trail of Tears. And then I have a few different squash seeds to get the squash going ASAP. That I've saved. There's loads of different ones in here and I don't know what they are. <laughs> I'll share everything that's in my April pack of seeds but I'm not going to sow all of them because I've got a lot going from last month because a lot of it carries on over from March. So aubergines you can sow now but I've got loads of those going. Turnips, I'm a little bit concerned these might bolt so I'm going to save them for winter well, or like the end of summer I think. Artichokes, I've Got some of these going and cucumbers and lots of okra as well they're looking really good in the greenhouse i'll show you later and loads more squash we've not had much success with squashes and um, we've been given loads of these seeds yeah we've got loads of squash just to have a go with these are some i picked up i love these they're like hokkaido's pumpkin that you can eat the skin off so you don't have to peel them or anything time to get sweet corn going i've got a variety of seeds and these are ones i saved from last year I've not had much success with corn yet. All my rouge matisse has gone to seed, so this is a great salad to be growing here. I'm gonna try these over the summer and see how, how they get on. Most lettuces and things would bolt here with the heat we're now getting. And then all your things like peppers and tomatoes. We've got lots of tomatoes on the go, but I've also got a few new seeds to try out. I'll get some of them going. Courgettes. I've got a few plants now that are looking really good. Some radishes, nice summer salads. Swiss chard does absolutely brilliant here. Finally got some pak choy seeds, thank you. I've been desperately trying to find some of these. So excited to see if I can uh, get them growing. I'm not going to plant too many because I think it's going to be too hot and I should probably wait till autumn, but we'll give them a go. I'm going to sow a few more chickpeas. They've grown really well from last month. I've already got them in the ground. Some more beetroot, this really cool multicolour carrots. I've got orange ones in the ground already. And then I have been requested by Yuan to get lots of melons on the on the grow, <laughs> on the go, on the grow. These are seeds I'd say from Nick and Ange. I sowed some last month and they haven't come up. So we'll try with the ones that are left. I did few, sow a few of these loofah seeds and they've not come up. But I also have these ones that I saved from the one <laughs> loofah plant I managed to grow. So hopefully they grow because they're such a cool plant. I've got some quinoa, I've never grown that here before. I'm gonna try and sow some of that, just see how it grows to start with rather than trying to actually grow it as a crop because I imagine, kind of similar to amaranth that I've grown here before, you quite, quite need quite a lot to make it worthwhile to be able to eat as a grain. Rat's tail radish, I got these from my friend Gary, who I call my uh, plant dealer, <laughs> uh, he's, done, he's given me lots of really cool perennial style, unusual plants and um, these rat's tail radish are really cool, they grow like a, almost like a pod above the ground that you can eat and it's really tasty. Then on to herbs that I'm going to grow, I've got some sweet sicily, I've never grown this before but I think it was this one I was reading you can make really nice tea from it. Some chives, some Thai basil and these other basils I have already got some on the go, on the grow, but if you want to sow some basil now it's a good time to. And some garlic chives as well. Now on to flowers, the best bit. <laughs> 
have quite a few as you can see. So lots of different cosmos. I've already got on the go sunflower seeds, so these ones, and then zinnias do absolutely brilliant here, so I would highly recommend sowing some of them. They're a really beautiful flower. As you can see, I've got quite a few, some more different sunflower varieties. Celia, I've got some of that going already. It's a great green manure, beautiful flower. The bees absolutely love it. Marigolds I did try last month and I've got quite a few of them coming up. But the asters, I think, still haven't germinated either. So I'll try some more of those. We had did have some very cold nights over the last month, so some things may have struggled. Um, and same with this black cumin hasn't come up. So I'll give that another go. Marigolds, I'm gonna put some with the tomatoes. They're a really great companion plant. Calendula seeds that I saved from last year. More cosmos, uh, some echinacea. And nasturtiums, you guys gave me lots of good tips about nasturtiums because I've been struggling to get them to grow. Apparently they'd like more sandy kind of soils and not too much sun. So I'm gonna try and just get loads going and plant them in loads of different places. And hopefully they take, these are um, quite an unusual color. I have got some others. These say Indian cress, but um, yeah, they're a nasturtium. From Lidl. Small anise and chamomile, already got those sewn, but if you would like some to sew now, do that. And pansies, I love pansies, and I've got lots of them that have like self seeded in the garden. So that is all the seeds. In the last video of the March garden guide, I was filling this bed with some plug plants and they're growing really, really well. Here we've got tomatoes and courgettes, the first courgettes are starting to develop. And then I've put lots of coriander in as well. And then here I just have a little bed filled with blue corn flowers and the linden tree and corn marigolds, which are technically a weed here, but they're very beautiful, so I'm not pulling them up. We have them everywhere. We have been digging out a base for our shed. You'll see that in Saturday's vlog. And we've been adding the soil to this other raised bed because we really need to get that filled. So we're hoping to get that done today. And then I can put some of my seedlings into that bed if they're big enough. And then that will free up some seed sowing space in some trays. We're doing the, like a hugel culture at the bottom. So filling up the base with wood and twigs. Then lots of garden soil and then a thin layer of compost on top. So yeah it's, it's working really well for this bed so we're going to carry on that but yeah getting all that soil in there uh, takes a bit of time so i have these two beds in front of our cabin and in front of the house the kitchen is just here and we've been working on these for a few years so the soil is getting really good in them now i've got a big strawberry patch on this side and lots of flowers growing in here and we've been collecting strawberries the last week which are absolutely delicious on this side we have loads of herbs but I just keep going we we're not planting new ones anymore of all of these and i have planted in some more peas i've got some really healthy looking leeks growing in here and um, a pea plant one that has survived and has been so abundant we had some very delicious peas from it last night yeah, this bed's looking pretty happy, very herby. I've got my Egyptian walking onions in here as well, and then I'm going to be planting up a lot of things in here. I forgot to show in the strawberry patch we've got these chickpeas. So I planted these all at the same time as everything else that's in the greenhouse, and they got them pretty tall, so I'm pretty happy with that. This is where the peas were previously. We have one plant that has survived and has fallen over, so I need to. Uh, we <laughs> reinstate it by planting some more in and there's just some odd bits in here i think this gets quite a bit of shade from the cabin so it's not a great winter garden but i think things are going to really thrive here in the summer because of the shade and then behind me we just have a huge onion and garlic bed and then some carrots that i'm going to start thinning out and someone recommended to me to take the biggest ones out when you're thinning and you get to eat the little baby carrots then rather than thinning the smallest ones that makes sense so <laughs> i'm gonna give that a go pockets in the way but behind me here i also have a bed of potatoes and then just a bed at the back which is kind of full of random little delights i 
will quickly show you what is going on in the greenhouse. Out here we have tomatoes and lots of sunflowers in pots and these are some goji berries I'd quite like to get in the ground. These are the red curry squash pumpkins and then we've just got some zinnias just starting to come up here and the Thai basil at the back is just starting to show through and then inside it's a little bit untidy <laughs> The, so the courgettes got really big so they've already been potted on, whole tray of cherry tomatoes and then this is supposed to be the loofah but I think some cosmos seeds snuck in somehow. This is everything I planted, none of the cumin yet, it's just a couple of sweet peas but they were quite old seeds. All the cosmos and the marigolds have come up, pansies still not showing signs of life nor the straw flowers we've just got one the nasturtiums i've potted a few on they're looking pretty strong this is all the chamomile anise and garlic chives one mizuna golden amaranth quite a few cabbages the aubergines are all coming up and then this is the spanish flag and then down here cucumbers they all need to go in pots this is the red okra never grown that before it's quite interesting looking a few turnips few spinach. Peppers are just starting to show as well as all the aubergines and then a few tomatoes. I think these are ready to go in to pots as well. Basil and then this is the green okra. Very intrigued to see what these look like. Kohlrabi I think is going to struggle with the heat but we shall see and then this is the one artichoke. Marigolds I've got one showing. No asters yet. A few hibiscus and then sunflowers that definitely <laughs> want to get out of here and then here are my two melons that have come through definitely need to get a few more on the go and then this is the sweet potatoes everyone's cutting a tree yeah these are the sweet potatoes i'm trying to get slips from and they're just starting to show some roots i was thinking that it wasn't working but there's some roots coming so we'll keep going with that they just need a bit of a water top up there's lots of odd bits where nothing's really happening up here so I think most of this is going to just get cleared out and then make space for all my new babies to come and live in here. If any of you remember from last year, one of the things I got really excited about growing was a yellow billy button and the plant has produced another one so it's looking quite abundant so whether we'll get more than one they're just growing here outside the cabin it's a citrus geranium, apparently good for mosquitoes and some gladiolus and mint over there. But I will take you down to the bottom garden now. You run in the olive tree pondering. So this is the strawberry patch here. The house is just behind me and then I go down this path and then there's the big garden just down here so I'll walk down there now. There are so many crickets out at the moment and I was looking back at when I filmed this patch last month and the level of the grass is just mad. So this is Yuan since strimmed this side but you can see here the grass is as tall as me in one month from the ground. I think I'll wait till uh, Yuan's no longer chainsawing <laughs> um, to show you down there. It's such a lovely sound. I'll show you in the morning. We do have a tractor this morning so it is also not that quiet. It's not, not always peaceful in the countryside but I just wanted to quickly show you the garden here. It's a bit overgrown but I mostly want to show you for comparison because I'm hoping it's going to look a lot better <laughs> this time next month. As you can see it's all a bit wild down here especially with this very tall grass. I'll show you how, how it's as tall as me. This is one month of growth. So spring here is very abundant. So this is the first bed where we've got the asparagus, the ever-growing fennel plant. It's about two, two or three years old now, this fennel plant. And then lots of cabbages that I think I'm mostly going to cut down and give to the chickens because they're all going to flower. Um, I think just over, especially the ogre. Over the summer they're just going to struggle, I think. 
I'll leave a few and see how they get on. But we want to clear space for all the new veg. And then I have a really interesting few plants in here from Gary that are perennials. So I've got some perennial leeks and some ochre. I don't think that's perennial, but it's an interesting plant. I'll show you it when I harvest it. But you can also eat the leaves, they're very tasty, very citrusy. And yeah, and there's some chard in here as well. But it all very much needs some TLC. I did mulch with some straw and that has helped really keep the weeds down. So even though I find the straw blows everywhere, I'm definitely sold on mulching. And we've got a lot of olives to chip. We've been cutting all the trees. There are so many vultures in the sky above us at the moment. Um, so yeah, I'll be using that as mulch. And that really helps to also keep the moisture in. So that will definitely be a good one to do for the summer. Just behind me I did a big bed of potatoes because I didn't have space for it so I just kind of chucked them in the ground and I've been putting earth on them so they are kind of growing. We'll see how, how they do. The second bed is full of cabbages and some rogue onions and a lot of weeds. This one I didn't have the mulch for and you can see how much the weeds took over but I will get on to it. And then this is the final bed which is potatoes and we've added a lot of soil onto these uh, this week and then we've, I've just got some dill and some purple sprouting broccoli which is getting very tall and I'm not sure how you make it kind of grow a bit more compacted but I think we will be eating this one in the middle soon. So that's it for April in the garden. Just got into April by the skin of my teeth and yeah I hope you've found it helpful or interesting to see what's growing and um, one tip actually that I got from you guys last month, please always send me your gardening tips, they are so helpful, is when I planted the tomatoes, I just kind of planted them quite shallowly and I was told that you can, uh, as the seedlings develop and they get their first flowers, you can plant them so deep and take all the lower leaves off which will become roots up to that first flower and you'll have a much stronger tomato plant. I will share any tips I get with you guys, so that's it for this video and I'll see you again in May, hopefully with a very abundant garden. I am so excited for this time of year. Take care and we'll see you on Saturday for the vlog and see you next month for the next garden guide and tour. Bye.